I hear the words and look at the faces and I feel right at home. These are my people, Jews, saying the same prayers I grew up with. But these Jews are worshipping in a place where history told them they had no right to be. These Jews are in Spain. Like most people, I came here to experience the culture and the history, to enjoy the shopping, the food, and the warmth of the people. But for people like me, there's more to this journey. It's just beneath the surface of what everyone else sees. It's our story, the story of Svarad. Svarad, that's the Hebrew name for Spain. Jews lived and often thrived in this land for centuries, until just over 500 years ago, religious intolerance forced them to flee. Yet even as they left behind their homes to seek their future elsewhere, the Jews also left behind an enduring cultural and spiritual legacy, one that continues to resonate throughout Spain more than half a millennium later. What I arrived here as a student of architecture from Paris, where I was studying. I understood that this place is linked to many other parts of my life, my culture. After many years of being in a yeshiva, in a Talmudic school in Israel, I discovered that what I learned about was in the reality of the city, in the world that are under the earth, that are everywhere in this space. This neighborhood has marked me very strongly. This was the Jewish neighborhood. All this part, it's like a s six or seven streets forming like a square, is the remains of the old Jewish neighborhood. It was such an important city for Judaism, for the creation of the Jewish culture during centuries. And now when you walk around, you discover maybe very teeny remains. There is almost nothing physical that you can see above the ground. You mean that other people would walk through here and not feel any difference? Exactly. For me, to live in this country that is so full of Jewish meanings, of Jewish experience, is incredible. And to be able to rediscover it, hasta luego. Shana Tova. Dale Shana Tova a toda la familia. Igualmente, Shana Tova. Ciao. Tres clavinas en un tiesto, una blanca y otra ros, dan del medio eso el alma en pesillo del amor, aman minus, minus, cuzun minus. Cuando yo tenía 20 años no conocía lo que era el pueblo sefardí. Empecé a querer conocer más sobre esta cultura y poco a poco tuve la suerte de conocer a Sefarditas directamente y mi amor por la música fue cada vez mayor y sobre todo mi amor por la cultura Sefardí que considero una cultura propia, una cultura ibérica. When the Jews left Spain, they left behind a part of what they were their culture, their stories, and their songs, and the sounds of their Spanish-Jewish language, Ladino. It struck a chord with Paco Diez. Cuando escucho Ladino, tengo la impresión de haber vivido esa vida. Para mí es dulzura, dulzura. Dulce lengua sefardí. Para mí es, cuando escucho hablar Ladino, me siento, me siento muy bien. I feel good. Una tarde de verano, pasé por la morería y vi una mora lavando 
al pie de una fuente fría. Yo la dije mora bella, yo la dije mora linda, de ver mis caballos de esas aguas cristalinas. The Moors were Muslims. When they invaded the Iberian Peninsula back in the 7th century and replaced its Christian rulers, they brought in ancient wisdom and new ideas. Looking at the Alhambra reminded me of their genius and of their attitude towards the Jews who had lived here since Roman times. It wasn't always perfect. There were plenty of ups and downs, but for the better part of 400 years under Muslim rule, Jews were allowed to develop and prosper. They enjoyed times so good that we remember them today as our golden age in Spain. Y los judíos colaboraron con los musulmanes para asentar y estabilizar el dominio musulmán en Al-Andalus. ¿no? Un judío granadino, Moshe Ben Ezra, decía que gracias al árabe descubrieron los secretos de la lengua hebrea. Dice, el árabe nos abrió los ojos. La historia judía está plagada de personalidades extraordinarias y, y una de estas personalidades fue Shmuel Anagid, Shmuel Ibn Nagrel Anagid, porque sabía, tenía una caligrafía árabe extraordinaria y entonces al conocer bien la, la lengua y la caligrafía árabe pues logró ascender hasta eh, el, el mayor puesto de la administración que es el de visir del rey de Granada. Ayudaba a comunidades judías y también pues, eh, compraba libros que traía de Oriente. De una manera se creó aquí en Granada un foco de cultura judía, una corte del que pues, salieron o se vieron beneficiados muchos poetas. around southern Spain, I tried to imagine what the Jews who lived here back then might have seen. It wasn't hard because a lot of what the Moors built really stood the test of time, like this magnificent mosque, even if it later became a cathedral. The houses of the old Jewish quarter don't exist anymore, but I could see that Cordoba still remembers that we were here. The Moors turned Cordoba into a center of art, architecture, poetry, and philosophy. And under the Moors, Cordoba became one of the world's most important centers of Jewish learning and scholarship. Among those responsible for that, two stand out above all the rest, Chizdai ibn Shaprut and this man, Moses Maimonides. <laughs> יש השטח ההגיוני הרציונלי ויש השטח המיסטי של הקבלה. בשני התחומים היהודים הספרדים של אז הצליחו. כדוגמה הרמב״ם, רבי משה בן מימון, היה רופא מובהק שחי בקורדובה, והוא לא רק היה איש ההלכה וכתב משנה תורה, מה שהוא ענקי לעולם ההלכה, אבל גם היה פילוסוף. מכיר את כל התרבות היוונית והמוסלמית בספרו, מורה נבוכין, מופיע לא רק את הקומה הגדולה שלו כיהודי, כאיש שמבין את תוכן תוכנו של המורשת היהודית, 
אלא גם יודע ליצור קשר בין הדברים החיוביים שיש בתרבויות של עמים אחרים ובין הדברים הבסיסיים של עם ישראל. There were times when Muslims, Christians, and Jews lived together in this town, when three cultures mixed. That's food for thought, and it's a point of pride for people here. I even found signs of it at my hotel. We are in a house in which they have lived different cultures, and if you enter through the door, you can see the four symbols, where you see the A of Abraham as the origin of all the religions. Then we have the Estrella of David, the Cruz of Jerusalem, y la media luna. Entonces, un poco es como lo que somos, es una casa abierta al mundo y todo el mundo es bienvenido. When Francisco invited me down to the basement, I had no idea what he had in mind. Pues vamos a enseñarte lo que es la joya de la casa, que son también las restas árabes y que tenemos aquí judíos y romanos que han aparecido durante la rehabilitación del hotel. Esto todo estaba bajo tierra y aquí encontramos pues restos de Roma. Esto es romano. This is from the Roman times. Yeah. Tenemos aquí restos de columnas que aparecieron en la en la rehabilitación de la casa y entonces pues estamos todavía poniendo en funcionamiento todo este tipo de cosas. Tenemos el origen de las murallas de la ciudad. Todo esto pues, va desde los romanos, eh, mudéjar, musulmán, cristiano, restos de un pozo. Y luego continuamos por aquí a lo que es la parte más importante de todo lo que se ha descubierto. Wow. Aquí es donde más se está trabajando, en esta zona. Y tenemos aquí restos de un aljibe, tenemos aquí restos de los antiguos conductos de agua para los jardines que iban en cascada hasta la muralla de la ciudad. Uh -huh. Y luego aquí tenemos, en la zona que fue de una zona de vivienda judía, tenemos restos del siglo XI en perfecto estado de conservación. So the house you found here, who did it belong to? Pues pudo pertenecer donde estamos enclavado, que es precisamente en la judería, pudo pertenecer también a una familia judía y judío conversos, como se dijo en su momento, que era la familia propietaria del escudo de la puerta de la calle. Se dice que eh, simboliza la, en la inmortalidad para los judíos y significa que esa casa pertenecería a unos judíos conversos. I still can't figure out where the Spaniards get their energy. I never saw an empty tapas bar. By the way, kosher is not on the menu. But flamenco is. For some people, it's a way of life. What surprised me was to learn that there's a Jewish angle here, too. That's what Shoshi Israeli told me that she discovered when she came to live in Spain. I found out that part of the flamenco, part of the, the origin of the flamenco, is actually from Persia. And after was the Arab and a very big influence from the Jewish that lived here. And there are still some letters, some poems, some phrases that come from this uh, epoch, from this time. One that is specially Jewish called Petenera, about the Jewish woman come out of the synagogue. And the, the Beya Judia, the, the, the very nice looking Jewish. After she comes out of the synagogue, they burned her. People don't even listen to the word. And I said, wait a moment, I am Jewish. This letter comes from my origin, from, from 500 years ago. And I'm close in circle with this letter in Spain on this stage with you, Spanish people. The 
the Jewish influence is not in the past. It's part of the actual flamenco dancing and singing today. It was hard not to think of the mark Jews made on Spain in days of old. Hard not to imagine Jewish statesmen, scholars, and financiers roaming the streets of Toledo. Jewish merchants and craftsmen plying their trades. Back in medieval times, people called Toledo the Jerusalem of the West. Partially, they were referring to the fact that Toledo was home to numerous Jews. But more than that, they were referring to the fact that the Jews of Toledo turned it into a center of enlightenment. They were translators. They translated knowledge from Arabic to Castilian, knowledge in science, astronomy, philosophy, medicine, and other fields. Jews turned Toledo into a bridge between East and West. A single synagogue remains from back then, the Transito. It's a silent reminder of the heights Jewish life reached in medieval Spain. I really believe that the way the Jewish people were integrated in Spain was like the optimum. This year I was studying with a lot of Americans. When I was trying to explain what happened in Spain 500 years ago to my comrades, I told them, just imagine, American Jewry completely involved, integrated as much as it is possible. And then in one moment, it's like, Religion still plays an important part in Spanish life. But when I came across this procession, it reminded me how it can change the fate of a people. How, after Christian armies reconquered this area back in the 11th century, religious fervor turned the Jews' golden age into a nightmare. The Catholic Church saw Jews as heretics and instigated waves of persecution. Jews were told to convert. Those who didn't faced torture and all were fair game for inflamed mobs. But there were exceptions, and one of them was right here. In this sector, there was a wall with 70 towers, where the first wall was built. 